Welcome back, everyone. My name is Patrick. You're watching the Oilers Rundown. Well, it was another disappointing loss for the Edmonton Oilers last night. Once again, in the shootout, falling to the New York Rangers in a game I was at. Watched them build up a 4-1 to lead, and then watched them slowly piss it away. But here we are today. Clem Costin was sick yesterday. Stuart Skinner was also sick. He did participate in the hockey game, but the Oilers did have Matt Berlin, the e-bug, or he wasn't on a contract yesterday, so I guess he was the e-bug, was ready to step in if the Oilers did need him. I believe Skinner was on the bench for the first period, but uh, I think Daniel Nugent Bowman tweeted that he was off the bench in the second period. Basically, the Oilers didn't end up needing Stuart Skinner last night. Jack Campbell was incredible. I know I mentioned it in my Fanatic rundown last night, you can see that Jack Campbell gave up four goals and the eventual shootout winner, but Jack Campbell was definitely not the reason the Edmonton Oilers lost last night. He kept them in it, gave them a chance to win. But going back to my last point with Stuart Skinner being sick, Clem Costin was out with an illness as well. The Oilers, who only had 20 players on the roster after being forced to send down Dylan Holloway and Vincent DeHarnay just so they could be cap compliant to activate Kyler Yamamoto, who of course, returned last night. The Oilers ended up having to go with 11 forwards, which they usually do, so that's obviously not a huge deal, but only six defensemen without Vincent DeArnais, who's been absolutely huge for the Oilers. And as another note, was also sick. Don't know if he's better yet, but the Oilers had to send him down either way. This goes to my next point. Thanks to a tweet from original poser at Coopsy39 on Twitter. I'm just going to read his tweet here. With the flu running through the Oilers, DeArnay, Dry, Costin, Skinner, that we know of, so Leon Dreisaitl, he's been dealing with an upper body injury, but also looks like he's been dealing with a sickness as well, so that could explain a lot of his struggles lately. Wouldn't be surprised to see some emergency call-ups that are available after the Oilers did play short last night. So they can call up players that make 850 k or less. I'm not sure exactly how many players they can call up, but we could possibly see multiple call-ups for the Edmonton Oilers today just because they did meet that quota of playing short a player last night. So they could get some help, much-needed help here, but the players, of course, have to be making 850000 or less. So some of those players that they could call up, original poser notes, Vincent DeHarnay, if he's healthy, if the Oilers could get DeHarnay back, even for a short period, it would be obviously amazing. The Oilers badly miss him, or really showed last night. Tyler Benson, Devin Shore, James Hamlin, possibly goaltender Olivier Rodrigue with Skinner's illness. So we'll see what happens here. If the Oilers do have any call-ups today, I don't know if they have to do it the day before. I don't think so. So they could actually be called up tomorrow before the Oilers take on the Colorado Avalanche but as we know tomorrow's game is an afternoon hockey game so I imagine if the Oilers are going to do any emergency call-ups we probably see those call-ups happen today. Other than that guys I mentioned in my video last night I think me pretty much all of oil country wants to see Ken Holland make some kind of move here sooner rather than later. The Oilers are currently playing with a 19-man roster with Clint Costin out with the sickness plus all those other guys we just mentioned. So something's got to happen here. Yessi puliarvi has been waiting, well, you could call it years now for a trade. It's really been pumped up lately. Yessi puliarvi needs to get moved here. I've mentioned a few times now, I think my going theory anyway is that the Oilers want to move Yessi puliarvi in one of their larger trades, whether it's for an Eric Carlson, whether it's for a Patrick Keane, pick your name there. But Yessi Pugliarvi is probably going to go in a bigger trade. I don't think the Oilers are going to try and move him for a draft pick or in a smaller one-for-one -one move. I think it's going to be in one of those bigger trades if Ken Holland can somehow pull it off. But he's got a couple weeks here. The Oilers can play with a shortened roster. But as we've seen over the last week or so, the Oilers are struggling enough with the roster that they have. Making the roster even smaller so you can keep Yessi Pugliarvi here is not working as Tyson mentioned in his video this morning, yes, he only played just over eight minutes last night. So 
I know there was a whole bunch of scouts at Rogers Place last night, so if the Oilers are showcasing Yessi Puliarvi, well, playing him just over eight minutes isn't really showcasing him anyway, so the Oilers are just doing no favors for themselves, no favors for Yessi Puliarvi. They got to get that one figured out here. I don't think that one can wait till March 3rd. I don't know. Ken Holland's really patient. Maybe it will wait that long, but the Oilers need to start making hay here. They got the Colorado Avalanche tomorrow. Not an easy test. I really thought they might struggle against the New York Rangers last night, and they did certainly at points, but they also had a 4-1 to lead in that hockey game, so this team is capable of more than what they're showing, but Ken Holland is making them weaker when he doesn't need to be making them weaker, so they need something here, need to get healthy, need to make a trade, and I think the Oilers need some kind of springboard here. Last year it was Jay Woodcroft, last year it was Evander Kane. The Oilers really haven't had that springboard move this spring. <laughs> I guess looking outside today, it's not quite spring, but latter part of the season springboard that they need. And I think a big trade, especially an Eric Carlson or a Patrick Kane, would really help the Oilers push forward here towards the end of the season. Speaking of Patrick Kane, with the Toronto Maple Leafs, big trade yesterday with the St. Louis Blues and well, three-way trade with the Minnesota Wild as well, acquiring Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Kari. Nola Kari was an Oilers target, so he's obviously off the board now. But with Toronto now seemingly out on Patrick Kane, don't see how they would be able to add him now. That does help the Oilers in a way if they are going for Patrick Kane, which it seems like they are. The board has moved a little bit clearer for them to acquire him. New York Rangers out, Toronto Maple Leafs out. Don't know who else is really in there at this point, but the Oilers are certainly contenders to land Patrick Kane. So we'll see what happens here. I think Eric Carlson is obviously the more important target for the Oilers to go after, but if for whatever reason they can't figure out that Eric Carlson trade, I would certainly take a Patrick Kane trade as something else. And you know what? They could probably make both trades work. I'm not saying it would be easy, be extremely complicated. Warren Fogle would probably have to go in one of the trades. Yessi Pugliarvi goes in the other trade. We know Tyson Berry would be a part of any Eric Carlson trade because you don't have Carlson and Berry. They're basically the same player, but Carlson, obviously a much upgraded version of Tyson Berry. And yeah, that's kind of how you make the money work there. There's draft picks, prospects involved. I went through and did one Eric Carlson trade proposal, but I don't think I'm going to do any more of those. It's just too many things come into play there and it's just my personal opinion and basically at the end of the day my opinion on the trade doesn't matter it's between Ken Holland and Mike Greer Ken Holland and Kyle Davidson how those trades ultimately work out but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below do you think they should go for Eric Carlson do you think they should go for Patrick Kane should the targets be lower down do you think you'd rather see multiple players brought in instead of those two big stars what are your thoughts on the Oilers lately overall? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If this is your first visit to the channel and you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing for all the latest Oilers content. I'm sure I'll see you guys later today if there's any new rumors or anything pops up, but uh, otherwise I will definitely see you tomorrow for the Fanatic Rundown. Looks like Toph will be joining me for a live stream tomorrow, so... You guys can look forward to that. It's been quite a while since Toph and I teamed up. I think it was a Florida game back in November, I want to say. So, yeah, it's been quite a while. So you guys can look forward to that tomorrow. And like I said, I will be back if anything else pops up today. You've been watching the Oilers Fanatic. Thanks for being a fan. See you soon, guys.